mistakes on race day can absolutely ruin everything. Months of training, months of suffering, months of sacrifice, all of these hours running in the gym, all wiped out because of some basic race day mistakes. The tiniest thing can derail everything. These mistakes are common and they happen even to veterans. So today what I want to do is share with you my experience as to the most common but also the most impactful mistakes that you need to avoid on race day so that you can achieve your goals whether it's crossing that finish line, achieving a specific time or even ranking. Hi, Simon here. Welcome to my channel. I'm an experienced ultra runner with more than 50 ultra marathons and about 3,800 miler under my belt. And needless to say, it did not always go smoothly. Some of these races went terribly wrong and sure, the months leading to a race, all of that training is extremely important to be successful on race day. But you can really all screw it up with some stupid, stupid mistakes. And it happens to everyone. It happens to me even nowadays. And in fact, the reason I had the idea to make this video is that during my last ultra marathon, Zion 100 mile, it did not go smoothly. And partly that's because of some basic mistakes that I did that really I should know better. And I told myself, you know what? I need to remind myself of some of the basics, some of the things that you absolutely should never do that mistake on race day because that can lead to a DNF or that can absolutely derail whatever your goals are. These mistakes can ruin all of your training. So today what I'm gonna do is share seven of the most common but impactful mistakes that you need to avoid at all costs on race day. The first one is something we've all heard, nothing new on race day. All right, sure, whatever. Even experienced runner will fall for that one. You got brand new shoes, brand new socks. You receive some exciting product. I think myself, this rule is a little bit too much. Nothing new on race day would imply that in training, I run a hundred mile to prepare for a hundred mile and that's really not how you should train. If you're wondering how to train for an ultra marathon, I have a lot of content for that that I suggest you have a look. You want to train the way you will actually race, but you will never fully mimic race day experience. Just even for example, the excitement of being at a race, how do you mimic that in training? So there will always be new things on race day. And I think the real rule is if it can be avoided, nothing new on race day. So there are things that you can try ahead of time and there are things that, well, you're gonna to have to improvise. And the obvious one for that are gear. You get something new, something exciting, something that you think will increase your odds of success. You got yourself some nice super shoes, some carbon plated shoes, they cost 300 bucks and you didn't want to try them in training because you didn't want to ruin them. You'll use them to do a PR at the marathon. Great, that could work out, but that could backfire too. You could have blisters, you could even have injuries because it's changing your gait. So sure, you don't have to train every single training run with your super shoes, but test them out. Test them out on some of your long run so that you get used to it. Ideally, you would always use these shoes, but even myself, I'm gonna use old crappy shoes during my training, and on race day, I'm gonna use my brand new exciting shoes, but I'm gonna break them in. I'm gonna test them out before, at least for a few runs so that I know what to expect. I remember watching Sally McRae's movie about Cocodona last year. And if I remember correctly, she tried a new combination of socks and shoes, and that led to horrible, horrible blisters. That's something that should never happen because this combination, you should try it in training. But again, it will happen to everyone, including her, including me. And it's true for gear, but that's true for everything. The way you tape your feet, your nutrition, hey, you receive some new gel and you're excited because they have a good calorie intake, don't use them for the first time in your race. Use them in training. Those gel could potentially not sit well with your stomach and lead you to puking. You wanna puke in training, not during your race. Well, you wanna not puke, but if you're gonna puke, puke in training, not on race day. Associated to that is you have to have the right gear for your race. Look ahead of time. What's your race? What do you need for that? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be cold? 
Is it going to be on trail? Is it going to be technical? Do you need to carry a lot of water? And based on that, you need to choose the right gear. Do some research, get the right gear, try it in training. And the big one, don't forget anything. We often need to travel for a race. We pack everything in the bag and, oh, I forgot my shoes. That could ruin everything, all of your preparation because your shoes are not with you. And that's true for any piece of gear. So what I recommend is have a list of everything you will use that you can prepare ahead of time. And once you're packing, you just cross everything to make sure that you have every single item that you will need. Still related to gear is faulty gear. Check your gear ahead of a big race. I need to admit that for me, the most common and annoying one is I'll just grab a pair of socks, put it in my bag and, oh, these socks have holes from my last race. So yeah, check your socks. Do they have holes? But one that is actually decently common and could absolutely 100% kill your race is we almost all have those soft flasks and they're great. And it's great that we have two. I really recommend that if you're traveling for a race, bring three of them in your bag. The morning of the race, you fill them with water. Are any of these leaking? And it's shocking how common that will happen. And for some race, if you only have one bottle, that's just not enough. And I like to make reference to experienced runner. And I remember Jamil Curry from Aravaipa raced, I think it was hard rock and he had a faulty bottle and that kind of messed up his day. So what I recommend is bring three soft flasks with you, test them in the morning, but also all of your gear. Make sure there's no hole. I had holes in my socks, as I mentioned, but I had also um, shorts that were pretty worn out. And during the race, then there was a hole. If I had looked for that and been a little more careful, I would have seen that, look, these shorts are still good enough for training but not for a hundred mile. Let's pick a new pair because chafing down there is not fun. Five, four, three, two, one. For the next one, we're finally moving away from gear and we're talking race strategy, how to handle race day. The most common, it's, it's by far the most common mistake and you've been told not to do that mistake and you're probably gonna do that mistake, and I still do that mistake, which is you go out too fast. You go out too fast because you're excited, because you're feeling good, because other people around you are going too fast. It just feels like that's the pace people are going. I should be going at that pace. And next thing you know, you're pooped out. You ran all of the uphill, you're pacing really fast, and now you're barely able to even walk. What you should really aim for, which like arguably is difficult to ever achieve, is something that is much more steady in pace. You don't go out the gate too fast. You stay steady, you stay strong the whole day. The only exception to that is if you have cutoffs that are aggressive at the beginning of the race, then yeah, okay, adjust your pace so that you can meet these cutoffs. But don't go too fast. Banking time is something that we kind of always try. It's like, well, I'm gonna bank some time yeah, you're banking time, but you're taking a second mortgage on your energy. It would be much more productive for you to slow down a little bit and be on top of fueling, being on top of hydration, being smart about walking the uphill, but still being fast and steady, power hiking with purpose. You know, you, you go with purpose, but you don't need to run for that. And that will just mean that you'll be able to go at a steady maybe 10, 12 minute pace for me for a very, very long time. That's the key, race your own race. You prepared with the strategy, follow it. Conservative pace, not too fast. Aid station, that's something that's overlooked a lot of the time and it's finding the right balance between not taking care of yourself at aid station, not utilizing the aid station and wasting a shit ton of time. You want to find a balance where you get everything you need, but you're rolling. And there are strategies to be faster at aid station yet have everything. So I think you need to go in step and you need to not forget anything. That's a big mistake I did at Zion 100 mile. It's a desert race and in a desert race, 
you want to fill your bottle with water or whatever you're drinking. I forgot to fill one of my bottle in the middle of the day at the hottest period ahead of a nine mile segment. Like that's really stupid. And the reason it happened is sure, I know I need to do that. I grabbed some Coke to drink because I was really thirsty and really needed the energy. I sat down, chat with other people, you know, being social. And I just forgot. I forgot to fill my stuff. Big mistake. So go in priority. And the priority is to get what you'll need for the next segment. That's the easiest thing to forget. So you start with that. Do you need new gear? Is it going to be a night segment? So you need a headlamp or extra clothing. That's number one. Number two, fill your bottle. Number three, empty your trash, replace that with new fueling, new gel or whatever you're going to eat. And now you can take care of yourself. Now you can take something to drink, some food or whatever. And if you want, sit down. But if you want to be fast, not sitting down is probably the most critical thing. Just by sitting down, we tend to stop 5-10 minutes. And it might not seem like much, but 5-10 minutes times 10-15 is a lot of time. It's often more productive to just grab something to eat, you know, a banana or whatever, and just say, ciao, and you walk. Instead of running, you just walk, and the distance you're covering is going to make a huge difference as opposed to sitting down. But if you need to sit down, you do sit down, you take care of yourself because this aid station is an island to take care of yourself and you need to do what you need to do. Maybe you need to warm up. Don't just fly through it without taking care of yourself. Before we dive into the next one, if you appreciate this video, please leave a thumbs up. That is helping me a lot. In the comments below, I'm curious to hear what are the big race day mistakes that you've done. Jug, jug. Speaking of not taking care of yourself, not fueling properly. Pacing too fast is probably the most common mistake. And the second one that is a close second is not fueling properly, not getting enough nutrients. And I think one of the reasons this is so common is because if you run for 10 miles, 15 miles, you actually don't really need to fuel that much. But if you go longer, which is the distance you're going to do at the race, which is probably the first time that you're doing that distance, the balance of how much fueling you need is very different. If you're wondering how to fuel for a race, I do have a video about this. But the summary of it is really, I will not fuel myself if I run a half marathon in training. But for a 100 mile, proportionally, you need to fuel much more because your reserve are much lower. But we're not used to that. We're used to running and barely fueling and relying on our glycogen stored. And that's gonna mess you up. That's how you bunk. That's how you hit the wall. That's how you get sleepy. That's how you get kind of grumpy and, and very negative and very dark is not having enough energy. So eat a lot, start early, but importantly, like we said at the beginning, don't try anything new in training. Sure, you cannot practice fueling for, say, your first 50K, practicing a 50K to fuel, but you can practice eating more than you would need at the rhythm that will be what your strategy would be for your race. The more complicated part is not puking or shitting yourself. That's harder than it sounds. And for that, you need to train your gut. You need to practice in training to eat what you're going to eat. And you'll need to do some trial and error. Gels are working very well for me. Gummies are working very well. But for some people, that's just too much carbs. Similarly, I think we focus a lot on carbs and kind of sport fueling. I can definitely run a 50K only on gels or even 50 mile only on gel. But longer distance, uh, that's starting to be an issue. I need to have solid fuel. And I think we push that too far in the future because we're used to using only that in training. And let's face it, it's tough in training to eat a burrito in the middle, but you should try to have some real food, most definitely on race day. And as we said, nothing new on race day or if it can be avoided. So maybe try to run a few times with a full stomach because on some of these races, I want to have real food and I suggest having real food 
decently early during the race. Something that is a little bit more salty, fatty, solid food, and even sometimes warm, will help calm things down in my stomach. I'm sure everyone is different, but I think that's a very common thing that you hear is eat some real food. So it's not just the amount of calories, but of course that's super important, don't underfuel, but also getting these calories from source that you'll be able to tolerate for the duration of your race. A lot of these races start kind of early in the morning. It's not uncommon to have a race starting at four in the morning. And we want to sleep as much as possible. You really should go to bed early the day before, try to sleep as much as possible. And let's face it, we're nervous, you're gonna wake up and all of these things and it's tough to fall asleep at seven or eight in the evening. But try to go to bed early, have a full night and don't wake up at the last minute. Don't just put the alarm at the time that you'll just be able to roll out of bed, run to the car, drive there, because you're gonna be rushed. And if you're rushed, that's where you make stupid mistakes. But also, race day morning, things take more time than you would hope. First, you go to the venue, and it's not uncommon that there's traffic jam at four in the morning because everyone is trying to find parking in that tiny, tiny campground. You just cannot find a spot. And oh, finally you found something, but it's half a mile or a mile down the road. Now all of a sudden you're adding 10, 15, 20 minutes of things to do, which is getting to the starting line. So you're gonna have to skip something. And what you might end up skipping is there's this huge queue that looks like it's gonna be 30, 45 minutes for the shitter. The poor potty in the morning are always full and there's always a huge line. The final one, the big one, the most common one, the one that we all do, especially if you're an experienced runner, you have to expect the unexpected. Race day almost never goes the way you plan. Things will go wrong. You had a great race strategy and something will hit you. There's always gonna be struggle. Look, these races are difficult. You're gonna be challenged. And being challenged implies that bad things will happen. You will be in pain. You will struggle. You might get sick when you're eating. You might have blisters. Don't freak out. That's normal. And you just need to switch your brain to, all right, all right. You know, th this is the problem that I was expecting would happen. This is what Simon talked about. It's going to suck at some point. It's not going to go the way I was hoping. And you're going to ask yourself, can I really do this? Or even you're going to convince yourself that you cannot do this. Well, that's a big mistake. You can do it. You can resolve problem. It's not going to be easy, but you can do it. So you need to regroup and think, all right, this is bad. How can I solve this? Don't DNF just because things go wrong. Things will go wrong. <laughs> like you have to expect the unexpected. Things will go wrong. I can tell you right now, I can guarantee it's going to suck at some point. And sure, the most unexpected thing that can happen is that nothing unexpected will happen. That actually happens. But typically, it, it, will, it will be a struggle. It will be harder than you would think it would be. Or something that has never been an issue will be an issue. You can resolve it. It's not about having a perfect race. It's not about finishing without struggling. It's about struggling and still being able to find solution and find that finish line. It's about pushing your limits. And that implies it's going to suck. It's going to be hard. This is the thing. This is the moment where we can see what I'm really made of. All right, that's it, folks. These are the biggest, most common, but also most impactful race day mistakes that can happen to new runner, but also experienced runner. Nothing new on race day. Make sure you have the right gear, all of your gear, and it's in good condition. Don't pace too fast. Take care of yourself at aid station, but don't waste time at aid station. Be efficient, but do what you need to do and make sure to not under fuel. And finally, expect the unexpected, expect to be challenged, expect to need to go and find in yourself strength. If you appreciate this video, please leave a thumbs up in the comments below. I'm curious to hear from you. What are the big race day mistakes that you've done that you would want other people to avoid? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.